friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is an intermittent cataract because of economic reasons we have planned sics that is small incision cataract surgery in this case let us observe this surgery this is the superior rectus brittle suture the eyeball is turned down with a muscle hook a forceps is used to hold the superior rectus and then a thick suture is passed beneath the superior rectus tendon now as i pull this suture there is lot of space in the upper part of the sclera where we are going to make a sclerocorneal tunnel this is conjunctival peritomy the peritomy is being done from 11 o'clock to 1:30 o'clock about 2 and 1/2 o'clock hours this is done and now mild wet field cautery is done to have a very neat and clean surgical field where bleeding will not disturb the dissection so this is very mild wet field cautery the assistant keeps on putting psas drop by drop and bifolar wet field cautery is carried out and now after this we are going to place the main incision i usually take a 50 number bud buck a blade for placing the incision in this case the mistake i have done is i have placed a very large incision about 8 mm the surgery could have been done with 6 mm wound but the wound has been placed about 8 mm this is the main incision this is a mild frown incision it could have been a more frown a little smaller wound i'm going to the proper depth about half thickness of the sclera and i'm going to that depth from one end to the other end equal depth is required to get the proper plane of dissection and now i advance into the clear cornea from the center and now i sweep backward and to the left and thus i make the left side of the tunnel it is done now i go to the right side from center i sweep backward and to the right and from center to the right this portion of the sclerocorneal tunnel is met this is a blind tunnel the corneal end is closed we are going to open it in a short time now capsulorexis is to be done let us see the measurement of this wound this is the wound it is 8 mm so it could have been 6 mm so without thinking much i have put a large incision and this should not be done this is the side port at around 8 o'clock and now as i try to inject an air bubble 
the air bubble doesn't stay it means there is some positive orbital pressure because of peribulbar block there is some up thrust vitreous up thrust so I just inject the dye in the anterior chamber and then wash it out with adrenaline and now I'm going to inject 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose and whenever the cataract is intumescent if we want to get uh, a rexis we should plan two stage rexis this is the 2.8 millimeter entry and now I take a cystitome make a puncture and raise a flap you can see some fluid coming out which indicates that there is positive intralenticular pressure intralenticular pressure is high so through the 2.8 millimeter wound I'm doing a small rexis and I have been successful in this and now some lens matter is to be removed I'm using a 23G Simco to remove the lens matter and now in this case the cortex is not coming well probably because of the positive vitreous pressure it's not coming well after injecting visco I make a nick at the 8 o'clock margin of the minirexis and start enlarging the minirexis now see what happens just in front of the main incision it goes to periphery because the convexity is still here from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock I could not remove the cortex and the convexity is high and the rexis has gone to periphery just in front of the main incision what to do now fortunately this is a uh, SICS and it doesn't matter if it goes to periphery we can safely complete the surgery and this is the beauty of SICS so after enlarging the main incision on the left side I have made a cut at the capsule and now I take the uterator again and complete the rexis on the right side so this is a good rexis with extension just in front of the main incision and now hydro dissection is before that this is enlargement of the wound on the right side so the tunnel is completely open now now hydro dissection is being done the nucleus has come out and now I inject visco both in front and behind the nucleus behind this lens mass and take the irrigating vectus I like this instrument very much irrigating vectus my left hand is pulling the superior rectus tendon and right hand with this vectus has 
delivered the nucleus. This is a soft nucleus and we could have managed with a smaller wound. Now the mistake has already occurred. We have to correct the mistake. There is going to be high amount of astigmatism. If we leave this wound unsutured, so cortical cleanup is done through the right sideboard. The cortex from twelve o'clock to six o'clock has been removed. Now, since there is vitreous upthrust, I cannot remove the cortex through the main wound. So, I have to make another side port. And this is a side port at around 2.45 o'clock. And now I introduce the 23G Simco through this side port and try to remove the cortex through this side port. But there is very little cortex, however some amount of cortex has come out. But there are a lot of cells sticking to the posterior capsule from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock. How to dislodge these cells? This is the hydrocanula and BSS, we just gently flush BSS over the posterior capsule in this way and the cells get dislodged. And since we are irrigating, this is safe, the antechamber remains formed and now again go through the side port and remove rest of the cortex and cells. So this is uh, safety measures when there is positive orbital pressure, when the there is vitreous upthrust, when the antechamber is shallow. And now Visco is injected to fill up the AC and the capsular bag. And now in this case we are going to implant uh, PMMA 6 millimeter optic intraocular lens because we already have a large wound. Uh, here goes the lens. The leading haptic goes in the capsular bag and the trailing haptic is placed in the capsular bag. And the lens has to be in this way because there is extension of rexis at round 11.30 o'clock and now you can see there is some wound gap large wound and the incision is near the limbus and so there is going to be high amount of astigmatism if we leave this wound unsutured so I have asked for a 10 o nylon and I am just going to place a uh, X suture at the center just to reduce the astigmatism. Without this suture, the wound will not leak, but there will be some gaping of wound and there will be high amount of astigmatism. And this is the X suture comes through the groove and then this is another bite taking both the lips first bite is only from the groove to the posterior lip and now this is just pulling the thread this video is totally unedited and you are not missing anything and now this is the third bite on the anterior uh, lip just come out 
and we are going to place this X suture yes my plan is just to oppose the lips not to make it a tight suture because the idea is to reduce the astigmatism Here it is. Very mild pull, and the wound gape is gone. So, whatever mistake I have done by making a large wound near the limbus, I have corrected that putting this suture there will be minimal amount of surgery induced astigmatism now now a position of conjunctiva to the limbus I never do cautery to contract the tissue and it is not foolproof and I don't like destroying and burning cells so what I do is I just place a releasable suture at the right side of the peritomy where there is a small radial cut. On the left side, left end of the peritomy, there is no radial cut, so it will get nicely opposed as we pull this suture. Now before I oppose the conjunctiva I'm going to remove this visco very nicely. This is irrigation of antechamber as well as the capsula bag. you know irrigation and aspiration through the side board now in this case I'm going to use the bimanual irrigation aspiration to remove visco thoroughly because I already have two side boards so irrigation and aspiration together Yes. So the visco is nicely cleaned. Now this is an air bubble to keep the AC formed. Now I am hydrating the corneal stroma on either side of the side boards close the side boards. So in this video I have done several mistakes. First the wound has been large next the wound has been placed close to the limbus the intralenticular pressure was not reduced properly so all these mistakes have been done and those mistakes have been corrected as much as possible And this is subconjunctival injection of gentamicin and dexamethasone. And now I remove the superior rectus bridal suture. And the final step is putting the 
releasable suture at the right end of the peritomy. Three loops one, two, three, one, two, three. Hold the suture and pull. And just cut the longer thread close to the knot. Other thread keep it little longer. If you just pull the longer thread, it will come out. This releasable suture can be removed after three four days. I usually remove it at the next visit when the patient comes for refraction. And see how good is the opposition of the conjunctiva. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your SICS skills.